Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm gonna to be doing a beginner's introduction to armatures in Blender. So this is for people who have, you know, you've probably started modeling some stuff in Blender, you're kind of getting used to it now, but you, you've seen this armature stuff and this rigging stuff, and you don't really know how it all works. You don't understand it, you've never gotten into it. And this video is gonna be for you because I'm gonna be going from a beginner's perspective on what an armature is, how to duplicate bones, how to name bones, how the symmetry works and the naming conventions, all that sort of stuff, and how to parent objects to specific bones. So it's a big beginner's perspective. I won't be covering everything. Okay, I'm just gonna be covering the basics that I think you should know when you're getting into this. And if you already know stuff like modeling and extruding, you're gonna find this pretty easy because a lot of the stuff like scaling, duplication, extruding applies to editing bones in edit mode. So. Okay, so go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender. I've just gone ahead and deleted all of the default objects in my scene just to give myself a nice clean space. And just like we add in objects and lights and stuff in Blender, going Shift A and we have all of these options here, we're gonna do the exact same thing with an armature. So you can actually see here listed, once we hit Shift A, one of the things that's gonna be listed is an armature. And you can see here under the armature setting, we have all of these different things. Now you might not have all of these because I have certain things enabled, but the only one we need to be focused on for now is a single bone. So just come over here and insert a single bone into your scene. And here it is, right? And at the moment we're in object mode as well. And if you come over here to your object properties and you click on here, you're gonna see the name of this is called armature. Now Blender automatically names it that, but you can come in here and name it whatever you wanna name it. I'm just gonna leave the name at armature. Right? Now, just like we would with a cube or any piece of geometry that we add into our scene, if you want to work with this and edit it, what we need to do is go object and go into our edit mode. So go up here to the object tab with this bone selected, enable edit mode. And it is within the edit mode that we can duplicate bones and extrude them. Now, just like we would in edit mode, if we selected a vertice on a piece of mesh and we hit E on our keyboard, we can extrude bones as well. Right, so you can select these little nubs here and you can go E to extrude them like that. And you can just keep going and adding them in like that. Just like we would with geometry, right? Now there's also another way you can add in bones in your edit mode and that is to go Shift D. And this is a very common hotkey in, in Blender. So go Shift D and you can actually duplicate a bone. Now if you look over here in your um, object properties, you're gonna see that it's still just called armature. So you're gonna be like, what's going on here? Like, what are they both called armature? And that's not the case here. This is actually just the name of the system that these bones are contained within. So if we actually go down here to our bone systems, we're gonna see this new bone is called bone.001. And Blender automatically adds this little extension on the end, and that's really neat. So this is our original bone that we duplicated from, and naturally it's just called bone, right? But the name up here is just the name of the overall system that we see. Okay, so just go over here back to our bone properties. So I just duplicated this bone on the side here by going Shift D, and I can duplicate that one as well, going Shift D, and you can see the naming convention is still automatically putting that extension there. So that's the two ways that I mainly add bones, is by going E to extrude and Shift to duplicate, okay? But there's also one other way you can do, you can go here to add, and you can also add in a single bone, and that'll also add in a bone to your scene here. Okay. So now that we know how to um, add bones and stuff and how to get into edit mode, we can go into some other things here. So say for example, you did um, duplicate a bone. So let's just go Shift D here, for example, right? I'm duplicating this bone here and putting it off to the side. If I wanted this bone to be um, attached to this bone, so say for example, I will eventually come into animate and I wanna move this bone and I want this guy to move along with it, we need to set up what are called hierar hierarchies, right? And the way we do that is we select the bone that we want to be the one that's getting um, controlled. We select that one first, and then holding in shift, we select the bone that we want to be the, the one that's higher in the hierarchy. So it's gonna be this one down here. And then if you go control P, you can go make this apparent, and you can go to keep offset. And you can see this little black line forming here. Now, if I were to grab this bone here in edit mode and move it around, this one isn't gonna move along with it because it's just our edit mode. But if we went into our pose mode, so go up here to edit and go down to the pose mode. And if I went to pose mode and I move this bone here, you're gonna see that this bone here is moving along with it. But if I move this one, this one isn't moving because this one is the one that is in the top of our hierarchy. So if I went over here to this little drop down, 
we're going to see here, if we go to the poses here and the bones, we can see in the top of the hierarchy we have this bone here, and the one that is underneath it being controlled is the bone 001. So let's just quickly go back to our edit mode. So if I grab this guy over here and I went Shift E, because this one is now parented to this one, and because I duplicate it from this one, this one is automatically also going to have that same parenting property. So if we go over here to our armature, go to the bone drop down, we're going to now see this bone, the original one, now has two of these bones under the hierarchy. So it's now controlling both of these. So if we go into our pose mode again, and we move this guy, both of these are under that hierarchical structure. So let's go back into edit mode, right? So let's just quickly get rid of these two here. Now, if we were to extrude something, okay, this is automatically going to make this bone a part of this bone. So let's just quickly go into pose mode. Now that we've extruded this little bone here, if we were to move this guy, this one is automatically going to move along with it. Now, if we were to move this guy, we can't. If we hit G to move it around, we can't move it, but we can rotate it, okay? So that's the difference here. So let's go back into edit mode. Let's get rid of this guy. So now that you guys kind of understand the whole parenting and how to add the bones and take them away, um, we can move on to some more things. So let's just quickly make a basic little rig setup here. So I'm gonna, with this bone here, select the little knob at the top, and I'm gonna go E to extrude, and I'm gonna go E, Z, and just move up a new bone like this. And then I'm gonna go E, and maybe just extrude a bone by hitting X. So if you move X, it'll move it along the X. So just something like this, okay? And now if I go into my pose mode, I'm gonna see if I rotate this one, it's gonna rotate those two, and if I rotate this one, it's gonna rotate the one at the top, and then this one is the last one, right? So let's, I'm gonna show you how we can actually add objects in our scene to this. So if we do move these around, we're gonna have um, objects in our scene moving around with them. So how do you actually parent geometry to this? So let's go into our object mode here, and let's add in some cubes. So I'm gonna just, as an example, add in a cube, and just scale it down, place it over here. I'm gonna go and add in a UV sphere, just scale it down and place it over here. And I'm just gonna add in a cone over here, just as an example, All right? I'm gonna put this one over here and put this one over here. Just like that. The safe example, for whatever reason, I wanted to animate these guys with this rig. What I'd have to do is select the object first that I want to parent to the rig, and then holding in shift, I'm going to select the rig. Then I'm going to go to my object and I'm going to go into my pose mode. And in your pose mode, you're going to click on the bone that you want to parent it to. So in this case, I want the cube to be parented to this bone. So I'm going to select this bone here. Then I'm going to go control P. And this time you're gonna see a lot more options in the set to parent. And what we wanna do is go to bone. Now I'll explain maybe in another video or maybe in this one later, what these ones here are. But for now, let's just focus on the bone. So click the bone. So if we now actually, um, this is um, grab this one here and rotate it, you're gonna see the cube is gonna go along with it now, right? And exact same thing is gonna to apply to the rest of them. So if we go back to object, we select this circle here, the sphere. Holding in shift, we select our rig again. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Go to pose mode, select this bone here, go control P, and we're gonna set the parent to bone. And let's do the same thing. Go back into object mode, select the cone, holding in shift, select the rig, and then go into pose mode and select this bone up here. Go control P and set parent to bone. So now, if we were to rotate this, they'll all go along with it because this is the main one in the hierarchy. So if I move this one, going G to move it around, or I rotate it, we can see all of these guys moving along. But if I grab this one here, we're only gonna see the sphere and the cone moving. And if I grab the one at the top, we're only gonna see the cone. And this is a really um, basic and crude way that I've set things up, but it's just to explain to you the basic concepts of how all of this works. And if we wanted to animate this, we could come up here, drag this um, bar up here, come into our timeline, and just drag your slider wherever you want to add the first keyframe. So I might come to frame 20. And in frame 20, I'm gonna hit A. That's gonna select all of these bones in my pose mode. And then I'm gonna hit I, and I'm gonna insert a location and a rotation key. And then we can do the exact same thing in edit mode with objects like, you know, just geometry objects. 
but in this case I've added in a keyframe to these bones in pose mode and then I'm going to come to frame 40 and in frame 40 I'll just move them around so I'm going to just grab this guy here and go R to rotate it then grab this one here and rotate it like this and then rotate this one like that then hit A to select all of them I'm going to hit I and insert the location and the rotation key and now we have these keyframes so if I play this animation we're going to see this and I can just keep going as much as I want just grabbing these bones and doing all sorts of fun things with them. I to select all of them, I and insert a location and rotation key. And that's how we um, animate bones as well. Very simple. A lot of these things are exactly the same as when we're working with um, mesh objects in our, our viewport. So we can grab a cube and add a keyframe to it and make it move over time. We can do the exact same thing with bones in Blender. Right? And if we wanted to, say for example, we select, selected all of these, select all of these guys here, then select their keyframes and you go X and delete the keyframes, right? Now it's in a weird pose. How do you get it back to how it originally was? Well, the way we do that is we go F3, we come over here and we type in clear and we, po and we type in pose and we can go to clear pose transforms and that's going to set everything back to where it originally was. So that's is really, really simple. I know it's been very basic how I've explained everything, but I'm just trying to keep it simple so you guys understand the basic principles of this. So we can go back into our object mode here. And if we grab this rig in object mode, it's still going to move these objects along with it because they are still parented to this. Okay, but they are specifically parented to these bones, like this cone is parented to this top one, this sphere is parented to this middle one, and this cube is parented to the bottom one. So that has been the basics of this. Okay, so go ahead and just delete all of this stuff here. So just select it by hitting A and then X and delete. So now I'm going to show you something that's also really useful. So let's just go ahead, add in a fresh um, armature to our scene. So I'm going to go Shift A, go to Armature, add in a single bone. And with a single bone selected, let's go into our edit mode and go into your front view. And what we're going to do is grab this bone here, go Shift D, X and just move it over to the side and then S to scale it down a bit. All right. So if we go down to bone settings, just like we learned earlier, it will automatically name it bone.001 because we parented it from our original armature um, bone here. So this bone is called bone.001. What if I wanted to mir mirror it over perfectly on the other side? What I can do is come over here and put an extension on the end. So let's get rid of the 001 and let's make it dot capital L. Right? So this is now bone dot capital L. And if we give it that naming convention, and we go to Armature, we can now come to Symmetrize, and it'll automatically symmetrize it perfectly onto the other side. Now, if I were to grab this bone here and go Shift D to duplicate it, and I came here and I just called it Bone 2, for example, and then I went to Armature, and I went to Symmetrize, nothing is going to happen. Okay, let's try that again. Symmetrize, nothing's happening, because we didn't give it the proper naming convention. Blender really cares about the extensions we put on things when we're working with this sort of stuff. So it needs to see that dot L there. So let's go to bone to, and let's just give it that extension, dot capital L, okay? Because this is the left side of our armature. Now, yes, it might be on the right side of your screen, but if this was a character, this would be the left side and this would be the right side if it's facing you. So this is the left side and this is the right side. Just keep that in mind. So now that we've given it this extension, bone to dot L, we can go to Armature and we can go Symmetrize and it's Symmetrized this one for us. And that's really, really useful, especially if you've gone and made a really complicated, elaborate rig of a symmetrical character. So you've done the arms and the legs. It, it's really useful to be able to have this. Now, once we've done that and we have these naming conventions, we can also come up here and this is really cool and this is really useful. We can come here and click on this X here and that's gonna enable sym a symmetry editing tool, right? So what's going to happen if I move this guy now? It's going to move its partner on the other side. So this one is bone2.l, and its mirror is bone2.r. So if I grab this guy and I move it, even if I rotate it and scale it, all of those things are going to be parented over to the other side. And this can be extremely useful when we're working with bones, right? Now, if I went and I parented, grabbed this bone, and I selected this bone holding in shift, and I went control P, and I went keep offset to parent it, with the symmetry tool enabled, it will also um, parent that um, constraint over as well. So that's also really, really useful. So that is something I hope you guys can use. And what else can I cover? Um, 
yeah, constraints. Now I won't go too into constraints today, but constraints are essentially the equivalent of the um, modifiers that we use with objects in Blender. So for example, if I want to add a specific property to a bone, so for example, I went Shift D and I duplicated this bone here, and I went into my pose mode. Now we always add them in pose mode, so go into pose mode. And if I selected this bone here, and then I selected this bone here, holding in Shift, if we go Control Shift C, it can bring up all of these constraints and there's all these different things we can add and they're just going to enable bones to have certain behaviors and certain kind of attractions or characteristics towards other bones. So if I went to made this a stretch too, now this bone is stretching to this bone here, right? So if I move this, that bone is now going to stretch to this bone here. And that's an example of a constraint. And you've got a whole bunch of other constraints here as well, but I won't go in depth on this, that in this video because that's can be some really advanced stuff. And this is more of just getting you really just getting your feet wet with armatures and just understanding the basics of it. Um, I hope you guys have been able to see um, it is pretty simple. A lot of the um, things like scaling, extruding, duplicating apply to armature and bones. But yeah, I hope you guys um, also have a safe week. Look after yourselves and I'll see you guys later for another tutorial.